Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.0. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about one way to approach turn-based encounters. That is, encounters that would occur during a turn from the transition of one passage to another. Thinking about passages in a way as rooms a player can visit. So to start, I put together a little story here called Turn-Based Encounters. And it talks a little bit about the game series Zork. The example I'm going to use in the story is based on the Gru, which is a monster from the series. Within Zork, a Gru is deathly afraid of light. So when you encounter one in Zork, if you have your lantern, they will leave you alone. And actually, in some of the later series, you can actually kill them with light, or sometimes just disable them, depending on the story and the amount of light. So in this example, we're going to replicate that behavior a little bit. However, instead of giving the player a lantern, something you definitely need in the underground empire in Zork, we're going to be moving through the pitch black, that's a, a phrase from the game's Zork, uh, in order to attract this Gru. So what are our rules of our Gru? So when we design something like a Gru that can attack at any time, we want to set down some rules, obviously. So while randomly attacking can seem like the best way to go, we want it to feel a little bit more like the Gru is following some sort of rules here. Uh, that is random in a way, but creates sort of a sense of dread at the same time. It's sort of a complicated uh, request there. So I set down some rules here to define how our turn-based encounters with the Gru are going to work. So to start, I'm going to have a 1 in 5 chance per area, sort of per passage, of it attacking. And then for as long as the player continues to move from one passage to another, from one room to another, that chance is going to increase. The is going to go from 1 in 5 to 1 in 4 to 1 in 2 to 1 in 1. And of course, by that point, if it hasn't already occurred, it will occur. And then finally, once the Gru attacks, the attack percentage will reset itself. So let's see this in action. I want, I'm going to enter the underground. Oh, and I get attacked <laughs> right at the start. <laughs> well, that's of course the problem with using, using a right of attacks is the Gru can attack you right off. So let's just progress a little bit farther here. So I'm going to click on kind of dry cave. And I see another option for sort of dry cave. And then kind of dry cave. Oh, and the crew attacks me again. And then we see sort of dry, kind of dry, mostly wet cave, kind of dry, and the crew attacks again. But then, <laughs> like I said, there was a one in five chance uh, of the crew attacking. So the chance of it occurring <laughs> was pretty high. Uh, but let's go look at the code and see what this looks like. So our first, my first starting passage here is the beginning. It's pretty straightforward. It's the exact text that you saw. We have two paragraphs and then a link to the passage, the rules of our group. So let's go look at that. So for the rules of our group, again, we just have pretty standard text. Uh, I'm using an unordered list, and you can create those using uh, asterisks or the star, and then a space. And then this last thing here, I have a link to a passage A, but I'm using the description, enter the underground. And then remember, if you want to change a description of a link to another passage, you do that by typing the description, and then pointing towards, an arrow towards, the actual name of the passage, in this case A. So when we clicked, when I clicked on enter the underground, we went to A. So A is an example right here of how to create the illusion of more passages by just changing the description of the link the player would click on. So to start here, we're creating the first of a series of movements through the cycle of the turn-based encounter. So the very first thing that happens in A is that it displays the passage Gru. Now I'm going to pause for a second in walking through A to go look at Gru. So Gru's not terribly complicated. The first thing that happens is it checks to see if this is the beginning of a cycle. Now remember I said a 1 in 5 chance. So the first thing this does is it checks if attack number is zero. 
Now, if attack number did not, if the variable attack number did not previously exist to when this passage is first run, it will be set to zero because that is the default within Twine 2.0. So if this is the first time running this passage, attack number will be zero. So if it is zero, go ahead and set attack number to six. And then the very next thing we do is decrease attack number by one. Set the variable attack number to the value of the variable attack number minus one. And so if this is the first time running, it will be set to six and then immediately set to five. And if this is any other time, it would just be dec decreased by one. So the very first, the very next thing we're doing, I'm doing here, is I'm setting the chance of the attack to be a random number between one and the attack number. So the very first time this is getting run, it will be a random number between one and five. And then as you saw, I immediately got attacked going underground. And then as this gets called again and again and again, it reduces each time till eventually it will be a random number between one and one, in which case it will happen. So the very last thing that happens within this passage is we want to see if chance is one. If it is, then we want something to happen. In which case, the group attacks. And then again, we reset the cycle. So we set the variable attack number to zero, just like it was the very first time we ran it. So for the very first time, and then the start over of any new cycle, it will always be zero. And so the turn-based encounters will be based on a random number between 1 and 5, or decreased for every time we move along, and then resetting each time. Similar how, if you're familiar with the Zork series, the crew would attack you underground if you didn't have your lantern on, if you didn't have any light around you. It would be random, but it would also be sort of a sense of dread at the same time, where if it hadn't attacked you yet, there was an increasing chance that it would. And so let's go back to A for a second and look at that. So the very first thing that happened in A is the display of Gru, the display of the passage Gru. And in this way, we're sort of treating Gru as a mechanical part of the story. We're treating A, and then when I get a chance to talk about it, B, as narrative passages in a way, if we're going from one place to another, sort of rooms, but we're treating Gru as a mechanical passage, something that just has some code almost like a function that we can call and it does something and then reacts to that and then we could see the result with an A and then when I get a chance to explain B and B. So the other thing that's happening in A and will be happening in B when I explain it in just a second is another use of the random number, the random macro. So in this case I'm seeing if getting the random number from 1 to 2, so sort of so a 50% chance is 1 if it is, then set the description to slightly wet cave. And if it isn't, slet, set the description of the variable to kind of dry cave. And then I'm using those descriptions as the description of the passage that the user will click on, although they will actually go to the passage B. So what this creates in practice, as you saw, is sort of the illusion of more things as the description of the passages changes, changes randomly on a 50% chance between slightly wet and kind of dry. And then when we progress, progress to B, uh, the exact same setup, except this case, mostly wet and sort of dry. So the names change, and then there's a 50% chance on going to the passage that it will be one thing or be the other thing. And in each turn, progressing from one passage to another, from A to B, from B to A, and then sort of back again, jumping between them, display is being called each time, calling the passage grew. And then as you saw, I either get attacked in a 1 in 5 chance, or a progressively, progressively higher chance of me being attacked each time. And this creates a turn-based encounter system. Similar to, if you're familiar with a lot of RPGs, and, the, and especially the early ones, when you're walking on a world map or walking through a dungeon, this is a similar mechanic. That there's a turn-based encounter system. That there is some percentage 
that you will be that you will drop into battle and then as you walk more that percentage drops each that percentage grows each time and the chance grows each time and eventually you will be in a battle it may be one step or it may be six steps if you're thinking about a character moving on a screen or us moving between rooms but eventually you will get into a battle but there's still a random element and then sort of a feel of it being a little more natural each time and that's sort of <laughs> as an example here how bo how both the Gru works in the Zork series and sort of how random battles occur in RPGs all based on the idea of a turn-based encounter system of you going from one place to another or a character moving on the screen and then checking each time sort of rolling a die if you will checking a random number and if it hits a certain number to go into a battle or in this case a Gru would attack each time basing the number on the amount of movement like going between rooms each time we we increase the chance or walking on the screen or something like that but each time it changes the weight of the function that determines whether or not a random counter will occur thanks for watching